Ah yes, GTA 5, one of the most complex open world games out there, at least until GTA 6 comes out, and one of the most popular games in general even to this very day. Obviously, a lot of people are willing to play this legendary game on various systems, from a PS5 or a top tier gaming PC, to your potato PC with a G100. So after watching various Luckfix videos for GTA 5, one question remains that I've been trying to answer myself for years. How far can we push it to the limits? That's what we're gonna find out. Because in this video, we will see what it takes to run GTA 5 on even the worst computers out there. And after watching the video, the result will look like this. Nice. So let's begin. For the video, I'll be using my super low-end Lenovo IdeaPad 115 IBY laptop. A laptop so slow that even watching a YouTube video at 720p is a challenge for it. It has the dual core Intel Celeron Android 40 and looking at that 2.57 GHz clock speed, you might think oh it shouldn't be that bad, but do not let the clock speeds fool you like it fooled the 10 year old me. This CPU has only 1 MB of L2 cache and is based on an ultra low power architecture. According to CPU Benchmark.net, the Celeron Android 40 is lower than the Core Duo Duo T7200, which is a CPU from the totally recent year of 2006. This Celeron, of course, has integrated Intel HD graphics, an unforgettable classic but with a cherry on top. It has swapping 4 shaders. Compare that to the Intel HD 4016 shaders. According to user benchmark, even the GeForce 210 can destroy it. The laptop also has 4GB of single channel DDR3 RAM, which doesn't help it much, and a slow 5400RPM hard drive, which should make for a very stable GTA 5 experience indeed. I've also installed a custom deploaded version of Windows 10 to ensure that there are no background processes making this already slow potato even worse. Ok, enough with the potato laptop roasting, let's play some GTA 5 on it. Five minutes later. Wait, what happened? Turns out, I forgot to do something very important. You see, in order to get GTA to actually open on this laptop, I have to go to the config file of the game, which is located in Documents, Rockstar Games, GTA 5. The settings.xml file is the config file. Right click on it and open it with Notepad. In it, scroll down until you find the DX version value, then change it from true to zero. What we did is, we lowered the DirectX version that GTA 5 uses from 11 to 10.0, even though the Intel HD graphics of this laptop actually have full DirectX 11.0 support. That's weird. I initially ran the game at the lowest settings that GTA 5 allows by default, which are ironically called normal settings, all the advanced options are turned off and I used the resolution of 800 by 600. I also kept the vsync at half because without it, it takes more than say 10 minutes for the game to load, for some reason, but with the vsync, it only takes around 2 minutes. But whatever, let's finally see that ultimate GTA 5 experience, which is definitely, absolutely, totally amazing! <laughs> no, I don't know why would you want to play GTA at less than 10 FPS, maybe unless you have the patience of a Buddhist monk, but yeah, I think we need to get to work. We're going to return to the config file of the game, where we've got a lot of things we can modify. First of all, if you change the shadow quality value from 1 to 0, you can disable the shadows entirely. But that's not all. If you scroll down a little bit, 
you will also find the reflection be blur value, which, if you change to false, you can disable most of the reflections and make the water look interesting. There is more. The LOD scale, pedestrian LOD bias, vehicle LOD bias values, and the maximum LOD scale value down below control the LOD of the game. LOD stands for level of detail, which is a technique used by video games to control the level of complexity in a 3D model by simplifying polygons and textures as they get further away from the camera to save on hardware resources. You can actually set the LOD values to negative ones, with the lowest possible setting being minus 2. If you're setting the values to minus 1 or minus 2, make sure it's followed by a dot and 6 zeros. If you're setting them to, say, minus 0.5 or whatever, make sure it's followed by 5 zeros. The LOD scale value is a weird one. Setting it to minus 2 seems to add a strange liquid-like filter to most things around you, but not necessarily make them low poly. The pet LOD bias value controls the draw distance at which the normal high poly models for the characters are rendered. Setting it to minus 2 turns all the characters into this masterpiece. Hello guys, you all look a bit uh, potatoed, if that's even a word. The vehicle LOD bias does the same thing but for the vehicles, well, almost. When you drive any vehicle, the game will still render the high poly model but without the wheels. But by far the most drastic one is the max LOD scale, which controls the draw distance for pretty much everything. Be very careful though, because setting it to anything lower than minus 1 or minus 2 for that matter completely breaks the game. Literally. I mean, bro, where's my character? And why don't see the cars? Wow. Just above the max LOD scale value are the city density, pet variety multiplier, and vehicle variety multiplier values, which control the amount and variety of cars and pedestrians. Just like the LOD values, they too can be set to negative ones. And setting them to minus 2 gets rid of almost all cars and pedestrians. I mean, look at this. This area is usually full of people and cars, and now they're all gone. Well, the taxis are still there, and so is this fine wood tours bus. It's the COVID-19 lockdown all over again. What's even more interesting is when you lower the max LOD value. Here, I have the city density value set to minus 2 and the max LOD value to minus 1. And while I don't see any cars up close, in the distance, you can see quite a lot of cars just disappearing and appearing out of nowhere. I mean, look at them. What is going on? Okay, this is starting to turn into a Halloween video, so let's move on. If you guys feel like all this config file modifying is too complicated, I made a bunch of pre-made config files into a mod, which you can download from the link in the video description. I divided the config files into 8 presets, 4 with the normal cars and pedestrians and 4 with the low poly cars and pedestrians. Before doing anything however, you need to check in the game's advanced graphics options if you have the frame scaling mode option or not. To use the configs, first, choose your preset, then open one of the two folders depending on whether you have frame scaling mode or not. Then choose what resolution you want to play the game at and open one of the text documents. Now, copy all the content inside your chosen text document slash modded config, then open the game's config file. In the config file, you need to carefully mark everything until this video align, then simply paste and you're done. Keep in mind that for resolutions below 400x300 with frame scaling or 800x600 without frame scaling, the game will run in window borderless mode, because I couldn't get these low resolutions to work properly in full screen. Still, if you want to make the game look like full screen using these resolutions, you can lower the desktop resolution by right clicking on your desktop, then go to display settings. There, go to advanced display settings, display adapter properties, list all modes, and choose the 640x480 option if you hopefully have it, then click OK and apply. Now, 
Unless you're gonna be playing at 640 by 480 without frame scaling or 320 by 240 with frame scaling, you can keep the desktop resolution as it is. But if you're gonna be playing at 640 by 400 without frame scaling or 320 by 200 with frame scaling, then we turn back to the normal display settings and lower the desktop resolution just a little bit to 640 by 400. If you're gonna be playing a dainty lower than 640 by 400 without frame scaling, then lower the desktop resolution to your desired one, but be cautious because it will become a bit harder to revert your desktop resolution back to your native one. You have to do this every time before launching the game. Anyway, using the super low preset with the normal cars and characters, the game now seems to run okay, I guess. I mean, it now looks worse than GTA San Andreas, but hey, at least it's no longer running at single digit FPS. And I thought it was running well, until I started driving fast. The thing is, GTA 5 was designed for processors with at least 4 threads, and the minimum and recommended system requirements do indeed state a quad-core CPU, but when your CPU has less than 4 threads and is the bottleneck, the game becomes unable to load roads, buildings and other objects in time when driving fast. It is also usually accompanied by noticeable stuttering. According to MSI Afterburner, the Intel Celeron N2840 was bottlenecking its own integrated graphics, which sounds crazy enough as it is, and yes, I did notice buildings and roads just not loading properly or suddenly disappearing. Usually, setting the VSync to half should be able to solve this problem, but since the Celeron in this case clearly can't achieve 30 FPS, we need to do something else. We're going to use River Tuner Statistics Server, which can actually download with MSI Afterburner, but you can also do it standalone. Now, let's open River Tuner Statistics Server, this is how it looks like. Press the green add button at the left bottom, then navigate to your GTA 5 folder and choose the GTA 5.exe file. Make sure GTA 5.exe is chosen on the left and on the right there's a frame rate limit bar, which locks the frame rate. Since we're in a pretty dire situation here, let's lock the FPS to 15. Well, it definitely feels a bit more stable, but uh, yeah. There are still many buildings and roads acting weirdly, you know. Ok, how about we lower the FPS cap to, say, 12 FPS? You know, the age of an average Fortnite player. Oh yeah, now we're talking. But by this point, the stuttering was becoming worse and worse for some reason, as we could notice the RAM and SOAP file usage maxing out. As it turns out, GTA 5 has an infamous RAM problem better known as Memory Leak. Basically, as you're cruising around the vast Los Santos, over time, the game begins to demand more and more RAM, and when you run out of your less than 8GB of system RAM, what happens is Windows increases the size of your SOAP file to prevent crashing. The SOAP file is like a virtual RAM that Windows creates on your boot drive, mostly to compensate when you're running out of system RAM. This is especially bad when your boot drive is a mechanical hard drive as it is in this case. Hard drives are nowhere near as fast as actual system RAM. The game eventually peaked to about 7GB of soap file usage with, you guessed it, extreme stuttering. It's made even worse by the fact that we're using integrated graphics, and as you may know, integrated graphics use system RAM as VRAM. Now, there is actually a proven solution for this problem for Intel HD graphics aka the weird VRAM increase thingy, but the problem is, it only works for Intel HD slash UHD graphics from Gen 4 to 10 using old drivers. And since the Intel Celeron N2840's Intel HD graphics are based on 3rd gen architecture, we can't do that. Another proven solution is to use Systrix Cache Boost 5.0, but the problem is, this app has a 30 day trial only, and Systrix themselves no longer sell keys for it, nor can you bypass the trial with a crack, trust me I've tried. Another solution is, whatever that is, which only seems to work for dedicated GPUs. So yeah, there isn't a proper solution to the memory leak problem for the laptop that we're working with in this video unfortunately, but I will show you guys what I did to reduce the stuttering. First, 
I don't know how, but increasing the texture quality to high really helped as crazy as it sounds. Second, I installed this memory and docked up, which I will share in the link in the video description. Here are my settings for the app, feel free to copy them. and press the clean memory button every time before watching the game. Another thing that might help a little bit is setting GTA's priority to high. After the game has loaded, press Ctrl plus Escape on your keyboard. Then right click on your taskbar and go to the task manager. Then go to details and find GTA5.exe. Right click on it and set the priority to high, never set it to real time. We have to do this every time when playing the game. You can also disable the auto scan for music, I do not recommend using custom music by the way because it can actually reintroduce the texture disappearing issue and even disabling your network can help. After doing everything so far, GTA 5 now runs better than before if you ignore the fact that the FPS are locked at 12. Now, there is some heavy stuttering and freezing in the beginning, it's inevitable, but after a while, as the game does its contained memory leaking, it does eventually stabilize. The final so far usage after driving around for a while hasn't dropped much, only dropping to around 6.5 GB. However, the stuttering was now way less, despite the 4 GB of RAM with integrated graphics and the 5400 RPM HDD. Interestingly enough, I found out that in the config, if you increase the texture quality value from 2 to 5, it can greatly decrease the quality of the textures. Sadly, these potato textures reintroduce the extreme stuttering and in fact it's actually worse than when using the stock normal textures. Bruh. I don't know what is the maximum allowed value for the texture quality, but increasing it to 10 however, apparently causes the game to have a stroke. And when you drive away far enough from your safe house, it just stops rendering any textures. We've reached the end of this broken world. Yeah, these cars and other objects are just floating in midair. So high textures is the way to go in this case. See you guys, the Celeron N2840 is a smart processor. It has a secret technology which prioritizes maximum texture quality for extra stability. And if you guys think this looks horrible anyway with the super low config, that's because it does. But hey, if it's what it takes to run GTA 5 on your toaster, then let it be. Of course, if you're super desperate, you could go for the potato low config with the blocky pedestrians and cars and a really low resolution, and that allowed me to increase the FPS cap to the silky smooth 15 FPS. But at this point, even GTA 3 looks like a next gen game. Now, Everything that we did so far does not modify the game files, excluding the config file, meaning that you can still play online even if you apply all the steps that I showed so far. The next steps that I will show you guys, however, involve modding and you won't be able to play GTA online, so keep that in mind before you move on. Oh, and you also need at least 30GB of free storage on the drive where your GTA 5 is installed for all the mods that I will show you. In order to be able to mod GTA 5, we need to install OpenIV. After installing it, let's open it. Choose GTA 5 for Windows, obviously, then you need to select your GTA 5 folder and just click on continue. After the app has fully loaded, hover your mouse to tools then go to ASI Manager. We need to install these plugins so as to not get a corruption error when you try to run GTA 5 with mods. When you get this create mods folder for the openivy.asi plugin, do not stick or untick anything and just press yes. The reason why I'm creating a mods folder is to be able to revert the changes easily if you want to without reinstalling the game entirely. And that's how to set up OpenIV. The first mod that we will check out is GTA 5 Resized, shout out to Storming Moon for suggesting it, and I'm starting with it first because it's the largest mod that we will be using today. Now, we're first gonna open the folder in the middle where you need to download every single one of these files, which are actually OpenIV mod packages 
with the exception of the high quality roads one, obviously. Two thousand years later. After that, we're going to return to OpenIV, where I will show you how to use the mod packages. Hover your mouse to Tools and click on Package Installer. Now let's select the first package and a Package Installer window will pop up. Each one of the mods packages have a description of what it does. After you click Install, you get to choose whether to install the package in the mods folder that will create it or the game folder directly. We are of course going to install all the packages in the mods folder because remember why we created that folder in the first place? And if you thought downloading the x64 packages from mega.nz took a really long time, well now you have to wait for their installation, which takes even longer. One eternity later. If you are hopefully still alive and well, then we turn to the mega.nz page of the mod and this time go to the first folder with the update.rpf packages, where you can choose which package to download. I recommend downloading the first one. And after you've installed the update.rpf package, here comes the tricky part. In the third folder, you will find an optional things folder, which in turn contains a tutorial on how to edit the game config.xml file. And no, I'm not talking about the config file that we previously modified, I'll explain what I mean. If you've downloaded all the packages correctly, in the mods folder, you should be able to find the update folder. Enable edit mode in OpenIV, then open the update folder and go to update.rpf common data, where you will find the game config.xml file in question. Create two folders, you can name the first one edit or something like that, and the second one you can name it backup. Then drag and drop the game config.xml file from OpenIV into both of the folders. The reason being is so that we can restore the original file in case we screw up. After that, open the game config in the edits folder with notepad. What? I'm just doing what the tutorial suggests. In the game config, scroll down until around line 810 where you will find these priority values. You need to change them according to what the tutorial says. After that, scroll down a little bit where you will find the size of data, max participants and num instances values, which you need to change to 10 two and one respectively. All the way down until here. Finally, in Notepad++, Hover your mouse to search and click on find. Type Xbox One and click on find next. Then close this window. Now, you need to very carefully mark everything as I'm doing it all the way down until this item line. Then just delete what I marked and get rid of these two empty lines. And save the changes. Then drag and drop the game config.xml file that we just modified into OpenIV and that's it. You can also download the low poly interior cars package located in the extra mods folder which as the name says makes the interiors of the vehicles low poly. And we're finally done with the installation of the resized mod. After installing this gigantic mod using the super low config the performance is now admittedly not very different compared to before, while usage and stuttering wise it's about the same as before, but in terms of CPU usage I think there's definitely a difference, albeit not a big one. I actually increased the FPS lock from 12 to 15 and while there are still a few textures acting weirdly when driving really fast, it's not as bad as before I think. The biggest difference however has to be with the lighting. Everything now looks much cleaner thanks to the removal of the fog effect, however, it's the clearness that reveals just how low the settings that we're using right now really are. All the low poly buildings in the distance now look so much worse to look at compared to before, it's actually kinda distracting, not gonna lie. Considering that there isn't much of a performance difference after installing this mod, I'm not sure if all that waiting is sacrificing 30GB of storage was worth it guys. 
But no worries, because Storming Moon also suggests this OKM optimization engine mod. This mod requires Scripthook 5, Scripthook5.net and the map editor mod. We're first going to install Scripthook 5. We don't care about the direct input 8.0 file because we already have it thanks to OpenIV, nor do you need to install the native trainer, just extract the scripthook 5.0 file into your GTA 5 folder. For scripthook 5.net, just extract these files into your GTA 5 folder once again, and for the map editor mod, you need to create a scripts folder in the GTA 5 folder. Then just extract all the files from the mod into the newly created scripts folder. Now for the optimization engine mod. Of course we're going to choose version 2.0 of the mod. First, extract the autoload maps folder into the scripts folder. Then go to OpenIV and go to mods, common.rpf, data. If common.rpf isn't in the mods folder, we turn back to the root GTA 5 folder, then go to common.rpf. When you get the red mods folder notification, press show in mods folder and the file will be copied to the mods folder and you will be redirected to the copied file. Drag and drop the fragment.xml file from the mod into your data folder in common.rpf and we've installed the engine mod. Judging by what the mod claims to do, you would think that we would at least see a minor improvement but no, it actually made the performance worse, so that's a fail. But hey, at least it was worth trying and testing it for the world to know. To remove the mod, delete everything in the scripts folder, then in the mods folder, delete the update and x64 folders as well as the common and x64bit.rpf files and reinstall the update.rpf package of the resized mod. Let's also check out the GTA 5 for super low PCs mod, which has long since been removed from the GTA 5 mods website but it has been saved in the web archive. To install this mod, go to the update folder in the mods folder using OpenIV, then drag and drop the x64 folder located in the update folder of the mod into OpenIV. Then in OpenIV, go to update.rpf, common, data. Go to the same folder in the mod and drag and drop all the files from the mod with the exception of the gameconfig.xml first of all because we already modified that file earlier and second because the one from the mod causes the game to crash during loading into OpenIV. We're gonna ignore the included settings.xml file because we already have that and we're done. And since we're at it, why not also check out the GTA 5 Extreme Low End mod? Now, we're gonna ignore the included config files once again, and we're also gonna ignore the included visual settings which make the characters blocky, first of all because you can already do that from the config file, and second because it only works for the pedestrians, but not the protagonists. And also the time cycle mode, because it doesn't work for some reason. We're only gonna be removing the grass. So, in the mods folder using OpenIV, go to common.rpf, data. Go to the same folder in the mod and drag and drop the two files from the mod into OpenIV. You can also use the render face disabler mod for some extra optimization. To install it, just extract these two files into your game folder, easy peasy. After installing all the mods minus that OKM optimization engine one, this is the final result. Man, I'm so glad that super clear lighting is gone. I mean, it still looks like crap, but at least with the fog, the potato nest is not like 100% exposed, if you know what I mean. Another major change is the greatly reduced draw distance, which is most noticeable in the built in benchmark during the playing scene. The average person might look at this and say, How could someone play GTA 5 like this? And yes, while I do agree that these graphics are horrible and that 15 FPS isn't exactly ideal, but just think about it for a second. There are probably a lot of people watching this video who also have a slow PC like the one in this video, and they just want to play GTA 5 no matter what it takes, and they probably don't mind playing even like this. And if I'm completely honest with you guys, I can still play GTA 5 like this. The 15 FPS honestly don't feel that bad. There isn't too much stuttering, especially after driving around for a while, letting the game stabilize itself, and the controls are still incredibly responsive despite the low frame rate. If I only had these specs that are shown in this video to play games on, that's the way I'd play GTA 5. The resized and GTA 5 for super low PCs mods work really well together, although I recommend installing the resized mod first. 
Now that I think about it though, this is actually running worse than GTA 4, because in another lag fix video that I made, I ran GTA 4 with a lowered mod and a not that low resolution, yet it was running much better than this. And it actually looked uh, honestly better than how GTA 5 is looking like right now. It's kinda insane considering GTA 4's reputation for being one of the worst PC ports ever and GTA 5's reputation for being, well, one of the best PC ports ever. But because GTA 5 is newer and bigger, I guess this was expected in a way. Oh well, it is what it is. I'm going to climb this hill right here because we want to take our revenge on somebody. That's right, we're taking revenge on Crisp aka Zworms Gaming for insulting so many low-end gamers in the past and spreading utter propaganda and lies in the sort of you can't play GTA 5 on low-end Celeron, sir, 4 gigabytes of RAM and integrated graphics using a hard drive only. Well, how about I kill your best friend Jack? Yeah, how about that? Take that, you white bastard! Man, those greedy high-end gamers keep spreading their anti-low-end propaganda. There are also a few smaller mods you can check out. For example, there is the Reduced Pavement Pollution mod, which, well, reduces the pavement pollution. To install it from the mods folder using OpenIV, go to the update folder, update.rpf, common, data, materials, and drag and drop the file from the mod. If update.rpf isn't in the mods folder, remember that you can easily copy it by turning back to the home GTA 5 folder, then going to update, update.rpf. When you get the red mods folder notification, press show in mods folder and the file will be copied to there and it will be redirected to the copied file. There is also the reduced blood effects mod which removes the blood effects entirely. To install it, extract this file into your game folder. The disable vehicle shaking mod disables the camera shaking when driving at high speeds and you can activate it by pressing J in game, although I couldn't get it to work properly as you can see. To install it, extract this file into your scripts folder. And the disable tire fire mod disables the tire markings. You can activate it in game by pressing F6. To install it, extract this file into your scripts folder once again. The links for all the mods that I used in this video are in the video description. But because the point of this video was to push it to the absolute limits, we just have to see how far we can go. For that, I'll download the simple trainer. To install it, extract these two files into your GTA 5 folder yet again. You can modify the key settings for simple trainer from the trainer5.ini file. I'm also going to switch to the potato config with the blocky characters and cars and I'm gonna use the resolution of 320 by 200 Because I'll be using the 320 by 200 resolution with frame scaling, I'm also going to lower my desktop resolution to 640 by 400 before launching the game to make sure GTA looks like full screen. Don't forget to increase the texture quality to high! I'm also going to disable the freezing just for this occasion because I want to see just how much FPS can we really get. In simple trainer, we're gonna go to options where we're gonna enable no pets, no cars and no trains, essentially turning the game into GTA Pripyat almost. And we're gonna disable the restricted areas. Now, we're gonna go to vehicle options where we're gonna enable vehicle god mod to disable vehicle damage. We're also gonna go to time where we'll set the time to noon and enable freeze time. And finally, in weather, we'll set the weather to clear and we'll enable force weather. You can even hide the hurt and radar in options, however do keep in mind that you won't be able to change or disable the radio in vehicles, I'll keep the hurt enabled. And with the help of Simple Trainer in the Potato Config, we now get it almost 30 FPS, that's crazy guys! But oh my god does it look terrible though! 31, 32 FPS, oh yeah, that's amazing! 35, 36 FPS, we finally achieved silky smoothness! We finally reached 30 FPS with the Celeron N2840 guys, I don't know what else to ask for. I told you guys, the Celeron is a good CPU, the PS4 runs the game at 30 FPS and the N2840 is getting more than that, so yeah, PS4 is worse than N2840, with Celeron Champion! Even though we can now get up to 30 plus FPS, 
there is still some instability, so I would recommend playing with this in the FPS lock to 25, but who cares, there isn't any difference between 25 and 30 FPS. Christmas day is on the 25th day and so is my birthday, and also the console master race has scientifically proven that the human eye can only see up to 24 FPS, so yeah, 25 FPS above all. I think we deserve a better car. Let's see. Yeah, I think this one is good. Alright, now that's much better. You know what? To make it even cooler, let's make it night time. Oh wow. Honestly, at night time, it doesn't look that bad still. So I decided to spawn an enclosed version of my new car and I want you guys to take a look at the interior of the car. Look at how epic it looks with the neon effect. Man, I wish to drive a car like this one day in real life, you know. By the way, the game is running well guys, it's running well, oh crap, don't worry guys, we have the vehicle on god mode, it's fine. Even though we had to make a huge sacrifice to achieve those smooth like butter 25 fps, I think this is still really impressive. Remember, this is a Celeron that is slower than culture duels from 2006, yet it's running GTA 5 for 25 fps, how could you not be impressed? and people thought this was impossible, well who's laughing now? If you, for some reason, still can't play GTA 5 even after doing absolutely everything that I showcased in this video, I don't know what else I can suggest, I tried my absolute utter best. I guess the last fix that I can recommend is working very hard to get enough money to buy the PC of your dreams, otherwise that's all I can say. I hope you enjoyed this video, perhaps you found this video very helpful for your potato PC, maybe you learned something new, or you just found it to be entertaining. If that's the case, it's been my pleasure making this video for all of you guys, and I wish you all the best. I'm leaving it there with some final gameplay. Mm -hmm.